Welcome back to Black Pearls, Distinguished Women of Color, the place where we shine a light on the extraordinary achievements of black women both past and present. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and click on the notification bell to stay updated on our latest releases. Today, we journey to the heart of Nigeria to celebrate the life and legacy of a woman whose impact resonates across Africa and the world, Fumilayo Ransom Ekuti, fondly known as the Lioness of Lisabi. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti was born on October 25, 1900, in Abiokuta, a city in southwestern Nigeria. She came from a wealthy and influential family, and her father was one of the first Nigerians to study in Britain. She was also one of the first women to attend Abiokuta Grammar School, where she excelled in her studies and became a teacher. In 1919, she left Nigeria to pursue higher education in England at Wincham Hall School for Girls. There, she experienced racism and discrimination, which made her more aware of her identity and heritage. She also became interested in politics and social issues and joined various student movements. When she returned to Nigeria in 1922, she dropped her Christian name, Francis Abigail, and adopted the Yoruba name Olufun Milayo, meaning God has given me joy. In 1925, Fumilayo married Israel Oludotun Ransome Kuti, a reverend and teacher who shared her passion for education and social justice. They had four children, Dolapo, Olikoye, Fela, and Beko. All of them would go on to play important roles in Nigerian society as doctors, musicians, activists, and politicians. Fumilayo and Israel worked together to establish schools and literacy classes for women and children, especially those from lower-income backgrounds. They also supported various causes such as anti-colonialism, workers' rights, and health care. Fumilayo led the Abiyakuta Women's Union, AWU, an organization that she founded in 1944 with the aim of defending women's political, social, and economic rights. The AWU grew from a small group of elite women to a mass movement of over 20,000 members, mostly market women who were the backbone of the local economy. The AWU challenged the oppressive policies of the British colonial administration and the local traditional rulers, who imposed heavy taxes on women and excluded them from decision-making processes. Fumilayo led several protests and campaigns against these injustices, mobilizing thousands of women to march, sing, dance, and demand their rights. One of her most famous actions was the 1949 EGBA Women's Tax Revolt, which forced the Alake King of Abiyokuta to abdicate his throne temporarily and led to the abolition of taxes on women. Fumilayo's activism earned her national and international recognition. She was one of the delegates who represented Nigeria at the pre-independence constitutional conferences in 1946 and 1954. She also founded or joined several organizations that promoted women's empowerment and cooperation across ethnic and religious lines, such as the Nigerian Women's Union, NWU, the Federation of Nigerian Women's Societies, FNWS, and the Women's International Democratic Federation, WIDF. She traveled extensively around the world, meeting other prominent leaders such as Kwame Nkrumah, Jawaharlal Nehru, Gamal Abdel Nasser, Mao Zedong, Joseph Stalin, and Nikita Khrushchev. In 1970, she received the Lenin Peace Prize, the Soviet Union's equivalent of the Nobel Peace Prize, for her work in promoting peace and social justice. Fumilayo continued to be active in politics until her later years. She supported her son Fela's criticism of Nigeria's military regimes, which often resulted in harassment and arrests by the authorities. In 1977, Fela's commune, known as the Kalakuta Republic, was raided by soldiers who beat up the residents, burned down the buildings, and threw Fumilayo from a second-floor window. She sustained serious injuries that led to her death on April 13, 1978 at the age of 77. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti was a distinguished woman of color who dedicated her life to fighting for women's rights, education, and independence in Nigeria. She was a visionary leader who inspired generations of women to stand up for their dignity and freedom. She was also a loving mother, a devoted wife, and a proud African. She is remembered as the mother of Nigerian feminism and one of the most influential women in African history. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to check out our other videos on Black Pearls, Distinguished Women of Color. See you next time.